my name's Eric, I'm KC8XJ, and I'm with Universal Radio, and today we're excited to bring you an in-depth look at ICOM's new wideband receiver, the ICR8600. This receiver made its debut at the Tokyo Ham Fair in 2016. They were showing the prototype there. It came on the market in the middle of the summer here in 2017, and this receiver brings forth some of the most advanced technology in receivers. It has receive starting from 10 kilohertz in long wave, going all the way up to 3 gigahertz. As you can see here, it runs a live spectrum scope, and the scope can be active all the way across its frequency range. This radio uses a hybrid of technologies for its receiver. For the shortwave side of the radio, up to 30 megahertz, it uses SDR technology, software defined receivers. Above 30 megahertz, it uses typical conversion type circuitry found in other receivers. That still works very well with the digital sampling circuit in this radio so that it can have scope imagery over its entire coverage. That's a very unique feature, especially in radios going up as high as 3 gigahertz. There's a variety of modes that this receiver is capable of receiving. For analog modes, it can receive AM, FM, FM wide, upper and lower sideband for single sideband, and also a dedicated mode for CW. Another interesting feature is that this radio is capable of decoding several digital modes right out of the box. And as of now, it's capable of doing RIDI, ICOM's digital mode D-STAR, NEXTDEN, a mode DPMR, DCR, and APCO25. All of those digital protocols out of the box are able to be decoded by this receiver so that you can monitor that audio. Combine that with an IQ out so you can pull that SDR digital stream and the scope imagery out to use with software. The radio is capable of being hooked up directly to a network and with ICOM software you can actually control this radio over a network without even having it hooked up to a computer. This radio does come with a DC cord. It's around 9 feet long, typical uh, positive and negative red and black cord. If you have your own power supply and you want to hook this up to it, you're going to need something of around the 4 amp range to run this receiver. Now, ICOM also makes a couple other power supplies. They have a, a smaller standalone power supply called the AD55NS. And that's a very basic supply designed specifically to run this receiver. And another option that I have here, and this is a very, very nice setup, um, ICOM makes a speaker that has a built-in power supply. This is called the SP39AD. It's one of the nicer options for this radio. An external speaker is aiming right at you, gives you a little bit richer sound. And then incorporated into this speaker is a built-in power supply. It has its audio cords and the DC cord coming right out of the back of the speaker and cleanly connects to the back of the receiver. You can see that this has a flip-down bail just like what's on the receiver and the radio and speaker can be tilted and kept at the same angle. So a very nice appealing look, great audio, and a lot of my customers have been very happy with this external speaker and power supply combo. Now we're going to take a close look at some of the features and uh, how this radio operates. It does have an SD card slot right here. That SD card lets you back up and save your memories. It also lets you copy firmware files to update the radio. ICOM can continually develop more features for this receiver and perhaps even more digital modes that this radio might be capable of decoding in the future. Of course you can see the large tuning knob that's here on the side. It's got a very nice smooth feel. We'll go over here to dial A. Dial A typically controls your scan delays and when you press and hold briefly brings up your scan speed and your your squelch settings. Dial B when used adjust the audio in the radio, brings the volume up and down. Dial C, when turned, will control your memory channels in your VFO when you're tuning in memory mode. 
and when you press it, it brings up your passband tuning controls for your filters. If you press and hold on the filter on the screen, it brings up a view of your twin passband filters. And then you can use dial C here to adjust the skirt of each filter so you can effectively use this as an IF shift or narrowing the bandwidth of your filtering. If you want to change modes, you touch the mode on the screen and then you have here available your different modes to set them. When you're working in other modes with digital, you can cycle through the different digital modes and then hit a back button to get out of the modes section. When you touch the megahertz position on the touch screen, it brings up a keypad. And then from here, you can do direct frequency enter to go to any frequency that's within its range. And then in, to get out of this mode, you can go back and hit the back button again. To change your tuning step, you can touch and change what frequency range your tuning step is. So if you're tuning around, you can very quickly make changes to adjust your tuning step without having to get into a big menu system. When we look at the bottom of the screen underneath the spectrum scope, these are some of the functions to control your scope and what you're seeing. It can operate in both a center mode and a fixed mode. In center mode, the band scope's going to slide with you and always keep what you're receiving in the center of the scope display. In fixed mode, as you tune, a green line will move up and down over the spectrum showing where the receiver is at. You're also able to expand the scope mode to shrink the size of the VFO lettering and see even more uh, spectrum scope on this. You're able to push hold and freeze a scope image. And you're actually able to capture screenshots of what you see on the scope and save that onto an SD card too. When you hit the span button, you've got a plus and minus button to change how wide and how narrow your scope is. Already you can see that the majority of the features are activated by the touch screen. A lot of the optional things that you can do when you hit the function key right here, it gives you the options to change your antennas that you've got connected to it. You can adjust your uh, automatic gain control. You can turn on a notch filter. You've got preamps and attenuators. It also has a, uh, an optimal IP intercept, which is really good at low band and on the uh, HF side. You can also turn on your noise reduction from this function screen. So the other thing I want to mention is when you hit the menu button, things in this radio are broken up in very organized and logical groups. The settings menu, you can adjust your audio tone controls a lot of your settings for being connected up to a computer. All these things are broken up in very organized groups. Even though it does so much, I think it is one of the easiest receivers to use. There are three antenna connections on this receiver. Antenna one here is a dedicated N type connector. I just want to caution you here, this, even though it's the same thread, is not an SO239 or a PL259. Don't try to put one on this jack because it's very easy to damage the contacts inside of that connector. Antenna 2 is an SO239. It's really good for accepting the, a PL259 to go to it. And antenna 3 is a dedicated RCA jack here. For VHF and high frequency, antenna 1 is going to be the default, which is the lower loss connector that's much better suited for it. Here is the factory DC cord that comes with this, about 9 feet long as I mentioned before. It uses a 3 prong connector and then you've got your two wires to put your power supply. This is supplied with it and plugs right into the 3 prong jack on this if you want to hook it up to an external supply. Now I want to mention, when you hook up one of the ICOM supplies, it plugs into the DC jack right below it. One thing we have learned is that in order to activate this jack, ICOM supplies a little shorted plastic jumper that needs to be seated into the radio in order to activate that jack. The radio would not power on or activate this jack with a supply hooked up until you install this connector. 
and it clips in and out very easily if you want to change that. But before you use one of the ICOM supplies, whether it's the standalone supply, the AD55, or the speaker with the built-in power supply, keep in mind you've got to plug this jumper into the jack in order for that to work. I had mentioned earlier the dedicated LAN or network jack. Over here is a USB where it connects to a computer for its cat control functions. These audio cables and things there are, are for connections when you hook up to a PC. There's a dedicated audio and an IF jack for output. Also here is an external speaker jack. This USB here is the one that's dedicated for the IQ output, so you can pull the SDR stream out of the radio. There's also a spot down here for an auxiliary input. That's another RCA jack. There's also a jack here for external meters to be hooked up to it. There is both a 10 megahertz input and a 10.7 megahertz output. Another option here that I want to mention, and I've already got this installed on our radio, is an optional handle. That itself, this is an expensive piece of equipment. You want to take care of it. If you're going to have it in a place to where you need to carry it around, this handle is a good option. It comes with the brackets for the handle, and then down here on the bottom are four little rubber feet that come with the kit so that you can set the radio on end and easily carry it around. Here you can see the flip out bale and the rubber feet that it sets on. And the bale is really nice because you can just tilt the radio up and take a close look at it. And then also check our website www.universal-radio.com for a full list of accessories and options that will work great.